Well, I'm into internet privacy, of course, and uh, I was told by the people on the YouTube comments that there is no privacy on the internet. If you want privacy on the internet, you gotta go out in the middle of nowhere and disconnect from everything. And so I did. I came out in the middle of nowhere, disconnected from everything. Kind of sucks out here. Well, I got news for you. There is privacy on the internet. Just not if you're the regular normie Joe who buys your latest Samsung or Apple phone, signs into every single account, and then proceeds to use everything the way they want you to use stuff. That always is going to pose you some problems. But on today's video, to celebrate International Privacy Day, we are going to talk about being safe on the internet, why it is possible, and what you can do. So let's go back to my office. All right, now that we are back in the office, let's go ahead and talk about how you can actually maintain a little bit of privacy on the internet. Now, to be sure, the people who say there is no privacy once you're on the internet, they're conflating privacy as an ongoing thing, like the active daily searches you're doing with somebody knows you exist and can find some information about you on the internet. That's the only logical solution I can come up with to explain the insanity of saying there is no privacy on the internet. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at five specific points. Point number one is what operating system are you using? The reason I switched to Linux, I was not this big, deep computer guy, geeky stuff in the background, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't into any of that. Okay, I was a web developer, I worked on computers, I would consider myself, I wasn't like a full-fledged computer professional, I was a, certainly a lot more than a novice. I was the guy that anybody that knew me would call up if they were having a computer problem, because I knew enough about computers to handle that. But I wasn't big into Linux, I wasn't big into Mac, I was simply a Windows guy. But then Windows 10 started coming out and I started seeing what it was doing in the background and I started to see that it's always connected to the internet, that it's always collecting data, it's always sending things back. And some of those included file types. A lot of it was just basic system information, what type of log files going on in the background. But the ultimate principle is it doesn't matter what that stuff is in the background. I don't want you to send it. And when it became too difficult to get around all that, I was like, man, this is not a solution I'm going to work with. And so I, to this day, have not worked with Windows 10 for anything more than basic tinkering. So I simply maintain my understanding of how it works. I just don't use it because it's too unscrupulous. It takes too much data. It collects too much stuff. And then on top of that, all the different settings it would like to do are the various types of things like Cortana would like to track everything you're doing. Microsoft would like to track your voice samples. They would like to track your typing samples. They would like to do all these types of things, which will quote, tailor everything back down to you. The problem is I don't want my operating system tailoring anything to me. I am perfectly capable of setting up my operating system the way I want it. And then I would like it to not be an active thing. I want to just turn on, do my work and turn off. I don't need it to be constantly changing and evolving based upon what it thinks my tastes might be morphing into, creating a further echo chamber of nonsense. Now there's always Mac. Mac in and of itself does still collect a lot of data. It is easier to prevent the data collection and they are not as unscrupulous about what they do with that data. So if it's a simple normie system between Windows and Mac, Mac is going to be a little bit more private. Just be careful of the fact that they're implementing technology now that they can basically um, scan your computers and files for things and report you to agencies for things it doesn't think that uh, you should be into. And certainly the original presentation of this was highly illegal stuff. You may go, oh, well, we don't care about that. The problem is these big companies, what if what if they simply don't like your political view? Don't toggle up. You're now deplatformed. What? All I'm doing is just having a file on my computer and whatever, you know. 
Um, but this is why I switched to Linux. So this is why we're talking about this as the first principle that Linux itself in general, and there are some exceptions unfortunately, but in general, Linux doesn't usually care what you do. It doesn't track a lot of data. It doesn't send the data back home. It e Even the distributions that do have some form of data collection does not collect nearly as invasive type of data that Microsoft and Apple do. Of course, if we're talking also about our phones, this also gets exciting because now our phones are basically this big extension of ourselves. And if we start putting everything about our life on our phones, it becomes harder to prevent them from doing anything. This is why, despite having a smartphone, it is based on lineage. It does not have any Google services. And I still only use that for basic web searches, occasionally checking email and basic communication with people. I don't do apps. I don't do two factor with a phone. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. It's raises too many issues and that phone particularly the smartphone with the imei number that can be traced directly to you in any application that is calling for it and so it makes a critical difference what operating system you are approaching to sit down and say hey um you can have privacy you know just without the internet well it depends on what your operating system is so principle number one where at all possible switch to Linux. I do realize not everybody can because of the different elements going on in our life. We might have to have some software package or whatever else. Fine. You can easily dual boot. I just built a computer for a friend of mine. It only costs like a thousand bucks or so. Maybe a little bit more because of the graphics cards are expensive right now. We put an IC dock in there with two hard drives. Boom to play video games with Windows. Turn the other one for everything else runs Linux easy solution. And there's other easier solutions as well that we're not going into all those here. I have a video on my channel about that. I actually have several of them. So have a look at those videos for more detailed information. The second question, what is the web browser you're using? I like to use this expression, web browsers is like voting for your president. There's never really a good one. You choose the one that sucks the least because there is not a ideal browser. But even beyond the fact that there's not an ideal browser, I'm going to give you this piece of uh, advice. You should never have just one browser in your system. They'll be like, well, I use Firefox. I use Brave. I use LibreWolf. I use Waterfox. I use Chrome. No, you should be using a lot of them. This is what makes a good OPSEC. In one of my systems, it's the system I'm looking at right here, I have Brave Browser installed, which stays logged into my YouTube account. And this is the only place I do things on this computer interacting with YouTube. I don't want to do any other searches or anything else because if you're logged in, and we're going to get into this uh, later, but if you are logged in, um, then they, they can collect and store a lot more data. Again, we'll cover that in a brief moment. But the other browsers, I use LibreWolf for things I'm just doing a quick search uh, to forget about. It clears all cookies, pull full on privacy mode, whatever else. I have Firefox for some things that I need basic regular access to, to hold some logins for other non-Google type services. I have Vivaldi for a uh, backup for web conferencing. And there might actually be more on here as well. I just can't remember if I have more going. I've uh, I have Chromium as well, which is uh, one of my other, I actually I think I have one of my other YouTube channels on Chromium as well. So I have Brave Chromium, Firefox, LibreWolf, and Vivaldi all on this one computer. And that is something you should be doing is separating out the various things you're doing so that what one browser is doing can't necessarily see what the other browser is doing. Because if, if one of them is logged in and the other one's not, they can't talk to each other. And that's why it's important to look at what browser you are using. Let's take a brief moment here to talk about browser extensions. Firefox has a brand new browser extension. It's still in beta. This is combining some of the privacy badger code with a uBlock origin type to block social media trackers. It blocks ads. It blocks um, any other weird backend domains. Now, it also will set your default search engine to start page, and we're going to talk about search engines in a brief moment. Um, but this is actually a good plugin that you can go and have a look at on Firefox where it will help you to maintain a little bit more of a private option if you are using Firefox, which 
takes uh, a few different plugins, combines them all into one place. So have a look at that um, that browser plugin from uh, from StartPage. Uh, number three, are you logged into online services? Let's go ahead and throw a small caveat into your browsers. Your Chromium-based browsers pushed a code in about a year or so, maybe it's two years ago now, where if you logged into any Google service, it automatically logged you into the browser. And I think logging into the browser, th there are a lot of people that say, I'll log into the browser so I can share my bookmarks. Really? You really need to log into a browser and share your bookmarks. I, I just don't understand that. If you do and that's you, have at it, that's fine. But it, remember that if you are logged into that browser, more data is going to be shared about you or, or is possible to be shared about you. If it's not actively shared, it could be uh, hacked and breached. And that is a concern. So let's go ahead and officially now move on to the third point. Are you logged onto services? Because if you are logged onto services on social media sites like Facebook, like Google, you're logged into a bank, you're logged into any other service and you stay logged in, then that company, by setting cookies and analyzing what you're doing, they can trace you across the whole internet and store your data in their company servers. So if you are logged into any service across your browser, then that is opening up doors for you to be tracked. So if you log in, you are less private on the internet. If you stay logged out of any of those services you might need, you are going to be more private on the internet. And this is why it's nonsense to say privacy on the internet is dead. So while I would never recommend anybody have a Facebook page, I realize there's some people in business that might need something like a Facebook page. If you have that, have one browser explicitly set aside for that, make sure you're clearing all cookies, you're logging out of everything, and I would use a password manager like KeePass XC with their browser extensions to sign in when you need to sign into that account, sign out, and then clear all cookies because that is going to prevent Facebook from tracking you around. Now, alternatively, um, what you can do is you can block Facebook servers on your host file uh, whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can block all Facebook things. And then this is the one application that I like of DNS over HTTPS. When you're ready to go to Facebook, go into your settings, enable DNS over HTTPS, that will bypass your host file, and then you can access Facebook. Now that is equally the best way to access Facebook in your computer because you can easily turn it off and Facebook has no ability to track you after that. But B, this demonstrates why DNS over HTTPS is such a bad idea because it prevents you from overriding DNS locally, which is a security thing. All right, but if you are logged into services, you are going to be a whole lot less private than if you always stay logged out of services. That's why I have one browser that stays logged into things and I don't use it for anything else. And there's reasons I have it logged into those. Let's talk about number four. What search engine are you using? If you're using Google or Bing or Yahoo, any of these big search engines, they are logging your IP address, they're storing those up, and then if Five years down the road, some law enforcement agent decides, hey, I want to know who all was searching for you know, steak and potatoes, and then they can provide you a list of IP addresses. This is dangerous. And yes, this is tracking you across the internet. But if you use a search engine that is more private, they're not logging this stuff. The police can go to start page and be like, hey, I want to know who all looked up steak and potatoes. So I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the data. And that's the important point. So Start Page is a really good uh, privacy-focused search engine. Other ones are DuckDuckGo, uh, Cirex, uh, which is kind of more of a proxy. You can plug all these different engines into Cirex, and you can self-host it. Uh, and then there are probably a few other privacy-focused search engines. Oh, I should mention Brave as well. Brave also now has a search engine as well. Um, so I would look at one of those three, Start Page, DuckDuckGo, or Brave. Uh, because neither of those are going to log your data and store your data and keep data um, keep active um, links to your IP address to what you're searching. And so, if you're using Google or Microsoft, guess what? They can follow you across the internet and 
uh, unmask your privacy. If you're using these other ones, they can't. Therefore, yes, it is. you can have a degree of anonymity on the internet. Um, and number five, let's talk about software. So software is a big one because software, what used to be, you would go out to the store, you'd buy a program, or, or maybe if you were extra adventurous, you might download a program. Oh boy. You install the application, uh, maybe it's Microsoft Office, maybe it's uh, QuickBooks, maybe it's um, Adobe Photoshop or some other Adobe suite. Well, a lot of these companies are all moving to software as a service, which means that they are deeply integrated online. They have all of these online components. And if you're using Microsoft Office, if you're using Adobe, you're using QuickBooks, these things in their terms of service that you're agreeing to to use them they can store and collect some of that data and if they can they can use it for analyzing unlawful purposes and i'm not saying go break the laws you shouldn't be breaking the laws but the fact of the matter is i don't want to be presumed guilty uh based upon the data collected inside of a program so Avoid software as a service and utilize offline software everywhere you can. We did a brief discussion with the supporters last week about this, and we just kind of talked about a few different uh, different applications. We looked at password managers. Uh, we didn't look at the Adobe uh, Creative Suites, but um, that would qualify as well. We look at Microsoft Office. Um, I talked a little bit about QuickBooks as I'm migrating my last business away from QuickBooks into, so that all of my accounting will now be FOSS. My other, I had a, a business that's been running for 10 years straight now, and uh, that one's always been in QuickBooks, and we are this year migrating it off of QuickBooks and onto the FOSS GNU Cash Alternative. And so that means that migrating my books for that account QuickBooks no longer has back-end, backdoor proprietary code. Now, I had an old version of QuickBooks that allegedly doesn't go online. All of the newer versions have an online component that QuickBooks can collect your data. Of course, it's all in a matter of convenience. And that pretty much is our last principle here. Uh, it's not one of our five points. Uh, it's just an overarching summary at the end. Maintaining your privacy on the internet is very possible, but it is also inconvenient. And that is the thing we have to keep in mind. Are you willing to inconvenience yourself a little bit for your ultimate privacy on the web? Understanding that, hey, you get caught up in a geofence warrant, you're going to have to be convincing the police that you're innocent when some guy robbed a bank that you happen to walk by on your daily walk. You think that's too far-fetched, but they have done that many times. Some states have, have ruled geofence warrants are unconstitutional. Other states have allowed them. And so you have to be aware of these things. Your phones, your smartwatches, your health trackers, all this type of stuff, this is all feeding big data. And it's a very simple principle. You don't use services that connect to the clouds. You don't use services that are online to maintain privacy. And does this mean that there is no privacy once you're on the internet? Of course not. Your operating system may or may not be transmitting data. Use an operating system like Linux that does not transmit your data. Guess what? You're more private on the internet. Some browsers collect more data about you than others. Google Chrome collects a ton of data about you. Uh, Firefox has the ability to completely harden it. If you're using Chrome, it's collecting a bunch of data about you. If you're using an alternative, um, don't use Edge either. You're using something like Firefox, it's hardened, LibreWolf, Brave, they're not collecting data about you. So therefore, you are more private on the internet by taking those extra steps. Uh, our number three was logged in. If you're logged in, they can store and collect and track and analyze and cross-reference every site you're in. You're not logged in, they can't. You are more private on the internet. Number four, what search engines do you use? Google, Bing, Yahoo, these big corporate search engines, they log your IP address with your your search terms and things like this. StartPage does not. Using StartPage, you are more private on the internet. And then last was your software. Some of your software checks home, some of your software does not. Use software that does not check home, offline software, and you will find yourself a lot more private on the internet. So hopefully this helped you clear it all up. And for you guys that um, are going to tell me in the comments anyway, there is no privacy on the internet because you just typed it in before even watching the video, uh, go ahead and delete your comment until you watch the video. 
and then discuss the merits of what we're discussing rather than taking some blanket statement that is blatantly false. So thanks for coming along on this video here on Switch to Linux. Have a look at all of the other uh, channels out there doing uh, privacy day videos. And uh, thanks for uh, Start Page reached out to me uh, to produce a video on uh, being more private on the internet. So I want to do a, a kudos and a shout out to Start Page on that for uh, encouraging me to do this video and have a look at Start Page if you're not already using it. So thanks for coming along, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.